It's Belmont Stakes Week, and neither of us are at HRN HQ, but we are talking horse racing for the nation. I'm Ed DeRosa, joined by Jeff Bessa, who's charting horse value. Been around a bit, new to the Horse Racing Nation picks page. Looking forward to getting his thoughts on the Belmont Stakes Day card. A lot of stakes, Jeff, and maybe a lot of chalk. A lot of chalk today, I agree. Um, you know, but the nice thing is, you only have a few horses to choose from, and you know if you pick right, you win. You know, uh, right. if, if you're playing serial wagers, you know just go skinny, real skinny, and try to get four or five opinions in a row, and you'll still get a nice ROI. This is not a day to be spreading wildly. Um, there's going to be a lot of chalk, but you got to pick the right ones. Yeah, I completely agree. And even uh, I've listened to a couple podcasts already that have been looking at the card and. Someone who I actually consider one of the the best ever in terms of uh, content around handicapping said that he was going to use both flight line and speaker's corner. And and I really can't think of a worse strategy than doubling up in that race. I kind of feel like, and I'm speaking to the Met Mile, uh, I kind of feel like that's the spot where you need to take your stand and not double the cost of your ticket unless you add some. You know, if, if you have a legit long shot and maybe two other races, I could see not wanting to get beat by Speaker's Corner. But the way this is shaping up, uh, I think it's one of those days you do want to take a lot of stands. And uh, that was kind of the first question I wanted to ask you. Uh, we are going to go through the races. But just as a general survey, when you open a card, you look at your sheet, you hear what horses are going where. What's sort of your first approach of, okay, where are my opinions? Uh, just what's that first step you take when tackling a card? Well, the uh, horses um, on my chart are sorted and more or less sorted in order of preference. Okay. Now they, there are a couple other ways I look at the charts, which we will talk about, you know, as we go through the card, but I'm looking to see if there are any horses in that top to bottom sort that, are out of order based on the morning line. Okay. Uh, a lot of times the top to bottom sort is very similar to the morning line and there's very little value, uh, to attack that race. So I'm looking for races where there are some horses out of order and those become like my stronger opinions where I know I've got value. I try to leverage those opinions more strongly, whether I'm playing the wind pool or whether I'm playing uh, horizontals. Now, over on the left-hand side of my charts, and we could throw up, uh, you know, we could throw up race uh, five as an example, okay? Which race? Race five, that's the Brooklyn, I think. Which is at the bottom of, of this page here. Yeah, okay, so let me see. Yeah, you got it, okay. So you, you can see, okay, this has got all of them. So you can see, first of all, race three, Echo Zulu. Second is Mataraya. There's no value there, okay? I mean, so... You're going to have to make a decision which horse you like uh, and move on. But in race five, Max Player uh, has a lot of value. We'll talk a little bit more about that race later. So that might be an opinion that I leverage more strongly, that I try to focus my ticket around. Now, I really love Lone Rock in that race, but that's a race where I might also use Max Player. Okay, sure. so uh, that's how I approach the card as I look and. The, over here in the, this DS column, you see these little numbers, asterisk, uh, uh, asterisk two, asterisk one, asterisk four. That's a score from zero to five on how confident I am in my top selection, okay? Uh, which is the one that gets this little plus horse over here. So, you know, fours are races that I want to put more of my focus on. I want to leverage those opinions more strongly. And races like, you know, ones or twos, uh, I don't have that good an opinion from a value standpoint, and I got to figure out how to play it. But small five horse fields, you really can't you can't spread you know widely in five horse fields. No, so agreed. Uh, you know, so yeah, so that's how I approach it. I look for where my strong opinions are, and then I build from there. Yeah, I'm I'm very similar. I, I'm a, I'm an odds line backer for sure. Um, don't. More often than not, I'm not going through the whole field and assigning a fair odds, but basically I'm generalizing, which is what my grid does. You know, A's are more likely, B's are less likely, but if there's a huge price in the B column, then I know I'd like that horse for some reason. And 
that might be the play. And obviously if there's three horses in the A column and one's three to five and the other two are five or six to one, in my mind, I'm going with the five or six to one since I had them somewhat equal. So yeah, I definitely think thinking of these races in terms of likelihood of each horse winning versus focusing on picking a winner is the way to go. Absolutely. Every horse in the race theoretically could win. Right. So you just got to decide, you know, which one uh, has a high enough probability of winning. I mean, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to pick 50 to one shots every race. Uh, you're going to lose a lot of bets in a row. Uh, but then you got to pick one, horses that in the long run are winning more often than you're betting on them. You know, yep. so, yeah, it's a tricky game, but it's a lot of fun. It is. Uh, well, let's start with the acorn, which uh, three year old Phil is going a mile. Echo Zulu obviously uh, stands pretty tall here, and uh, maybe I'm not even sure I call her the most likely winner. I have her right there with number four. You said her name a lot better than I will, um, but I think at the likely prices here, uh, I got to play the four. Really? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like Echo Zulu. Um, and I understand your point on Monterey. She's stretching out, I think, from seven. Monterey. Yeah, Monterey. Yes. But she's stretching out from six, seven furlong races. We'll be going a mile. I think she did it once before, maybe when she was a two-year-old. She didn't fare too well. But um, I just feel like Echo Zulu is going to get a very easy lead in here. Um, just way too fast early. And, uh, you know, this will be her third start of the year. She faced a brutally fast pace in the Kentucky Oaks. Had to actually take back. Uh, but it did her in late in the stretch. She ran admirably. Um, I thought it was a good race for her. I, now she's third star at the layoff. I think she's going to run huge. I don't. I think it probably goes 5-4. I mean, I, I'm going to take – I'm a single uh, – I don't think – I don't know if there's any I'm, – I'm probably not playing the early pick five. Uh, so how would I actually bet Echo Zulu? I probably <laughs> wouldn't. Okay. I probably just pass the race, or maybe I play a straight double Echo Zulu into the next race. Right. Maybe I get a little better than three to five uh, on that double, and that is very common. You could do a lot better in the double. So you just single Echo Zulu if that's the way you want to play it, and then try to pick up another horse in the next race. Well, the next race uh, won't feature as prohibitive a favorite, I don't think, uh, no. as Echo Zulu, but certainly. Regal Glory in the Just a Game, uh, one of several Chads uh, in another compact field. Uh, but um, she she looks tough. I, I would say from a favorite standpoint, I'm more likely to back her than Echo Zulu because I do have a lot of respect for Monterea, but uh, a very chalky start to the stakes proceedings here. Well, that's why they stuck up down here in race three and race four. Um I think it's an interesting race because there are people talking about speak of the devil, like she is going to dominate this field. I think she uh, may get bet down even more. Um, you know, I can't see it looking at the PPs. Um, they did pay two point two million dollars for this uh, for this mare, uh, and maybe she just loves the firm ground. She exploded in her first start in America and dominated several horses in this race. Um, so, I mean, she's legit, but real glory, where can you go wrong with this horse? This horse is so good. The other interesting thing is not only is this, they both Chad Brown, but they're both owned by Peter Brandt. Yes. As and, is, uh, in Italian. I mean, aren't there other places to run your horses? I just, uh, <laughs> I, I'm confused by the strategy. I think they're going to run one, two, and I don't know which one's going to win. I mean, it's hard. Very difficult for me to choose between these two horses. Um, I got no problem with your Regal Glory. I I would probably go too deep in this race. Maybe I play a pick three, Echo Zulu. Then I go too deep here. And then I get my, you know, maybe I'm going to go too deep in the race after this and see if I can make a scratch or what, scratch together a little bit of profit. But yeah, we'll see. Which we'll, we can get to the Brooklyn now. Um, yeah, I like Regal Glory a little better. Um, and the reason why is her Ragazin sheet numbers. That was kind of the final deciding factor in my mind, because I do okay. think Speak of the Devil, clearly very talented. Uh, Ragazin says Regal Glory a touch faster. So at the same price, I'll go with them. But um, I mean, it'll be a good race. I wish it were different trainers and stuff such. So it wasn't 
Like either way, Chad's going to win. So to me, that takes a little of the drama away. But the Brooklyn, I'm with you on Max Player. I definitely think he is a player in here. Uh, our first competitive race, I would say. I have any. I have five of the seven as horses who would not shock me in here, which means I am going to try to beat Lone Rock as the two to one favorite. But um, this is a tough one, and Max Player at six to one, I think's the pick. Yeah, Max Player sits on top of my chart, gets the A-plus grade, is dropping down from much, much tougher competition uh, and cutting back in uh, distance. Both could be very uh, effective for him. Um, Lone Rock last year won this race, and I thought it was the most impressive performance by any horse all year. Hmm. Uh, that, it, it won like by 11 lengths, ran the final quarter mile in 24 seconds. This is a very legitimate 12 furlong horse. Yeah, specialist uh, for sure. Yeah, I'm going to go too deep. Uh, you know, like that pick three we talked about, I'd probably go five, two, three, one, two. If it goes chalky, I'll, I'll barely scratch, scratch together a profit. But if I can catch that two in the race five, um, Max Player. I think Max Player is the only, I, I, I agree, it's maybe a little, there is some white, it might be a little more wide open. But I don't want to spread. Um, I got to have an opinion and hopefully, right. hopefully you know. Uh, so you're thinking Max Player as well. We're on the same horse. Yeah. No, I mean, it. it is the longest price of, of the five in a, in a blanket. Uh, he definitely, I think, have to be made the top pick. I'm a little more bearish on Lone Rock than you just because I, I think Warren is, is in the mix as a for instance. Um, mm -hmm. And... I mean, I guess I'm on two second choices with Monterey and Regal Glory based on the morning line, but the fields are short and they're the obvious alternative in both races. It's not like getting both of them home and then Lone Rock is going to be some kind of score. So I'm, I'm still looking to beat the chalk in this leg. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a, I don't want to say underwhelming because the horses are, are fun and there should be some good performances at least. Uh, but Certainly, this isn't uh, the, the most exciting stakes trio uh, we've seen before. Yeah. That's but a, uh, the all grade uh, one pick six starts next. So maybe we'll have some, maybe some fireworks there. Yeah. A couple comments I want to make for people following along on the charts. Sure. Um, first of all, the energy column is this column. I'll bring it back up since the three races we've talked about are on this page. Yeah. Because you talked about rags. Okay. And, um, you know, my energy scores are not as good as rags. I don't even claim to say that. But you'll notice Regal Glory 99 is slightly faster than Speak of the Devil 97. So that is kind of my uh, speed figure. It is it is slightly, slightly faster. The other thing interesting is this value score. The value score is basically comparing my two odds lines that I come up with for the horse to the morning line. And bigger is better. And if you don't see anything, that means the horse actually is, a, is an underlay. Uh, and But $19 of value is pretty solid. Okay, so uh, that number, those numbers can be compared race to race as well. So you can look for the, the biggest value horse of the day. But 19 is a very strong value horse. And uh, so, you know, max player, I think, is a decent pick. All right. I like it. And I, I think he actually might be higher than six to one. So um, wow. might even might even get some additional price. Uh, the next race is the Woody Stevens. It does start the uh, the grade one sextet dollar pick six here. And when I saw, you know, I asked you earlier about kind of looking at the whole program and where your ideas might be. When I saw that Jack Christopher was actually the lowest morning line horse of any, um, that piqued my interest a little because I definitely think flight line is a more likely winner. And then I dug into the race and just could not make a case against him. The Pat day mile was a fantastic return. He matched his top as a two year old. So very healthy there. He didn't overdo it. You get five weeks, Chad Brown, he's actually cutting back a little bit. Um, it, this is his race to lose. Totally agree. I think it's an interesting path they're taking with this horse. I mean, they've been very careful. Obviously, the horse got hurt before the Breeders' Cup Juvenile uh, and then came back with this absolutely dominant, you know, mile win at Churchill and now cutting back. 
uh, to seven furlongs. So they're being pretty careful. This is an easy spot. Um, yeah, this is a single. I think the only way you you have to single this horse. And I think what it is interesting, you look at the chart. Um, I like Papa Cap to run second. He, he ran second to Jack Christopher at Churchill. And for some reason, Papa Cap is 10 to 1. Um, and, Pop, you know, Papa Cap certainly as good as Wit uh, at 3.5 to 1. So, or Morale. Right. Okay. So, I think one way you could make some money on this race is to bet a straight exacta. One, two. Um, but one is definitely, I think, going to win and win easily. Yeah, shaping up that way uh, and to start to pick six, not going to get any more creative than just singling and moving on. And yeah, being thin elsewhere, I am going to try to beat the one in the FIPS, though. That's Latruska. And uh, I commented on, on Twitter on Wednesday morning, uh, again, looking at, at the rags. But whenever she's had a lifetime top, lifetime top, she has moved back off it every time in her career, no matter the age. When she runs a lifetime best, she does react. And that's enough for me at a short price to want to look elsewhere. I'm personally a big Malathot fan, uh, but the more I looked at the race, the harder I could make a case that she's the total lean here, uh, especially with the race search results ran last time, I thought. And then Clary Air, I wish the Asmussen bond was going a little better because I think based on the numbers, she could be one you'd maybe hang your hat on even in a short field with maybe not a ton of pace to close into, but she's going to be an okay price. Given how much I like Jack Christopher and flight line, which we'll get to, I'm willing to go three deep here against the favorite. So it's three, four, five for me. Interesting. So I was uh, at the Apple Blossom this year. Uh, so I got to watch that Latruska race. She had a very favorable setup, was all in to hold off Clarier, who definitely had the tougher, wider trip. And if the horse was, if I remember correctly, I'm going by memory, Latruska was drifting out in the stretch. Um, may have even slightly impeded CC, although CC wasn't going to win. And then right. definitely kind of pushed out Clarier. Uh, both horses were all in, okay? And uh, I wasn't a big fan of that effort from Latruska, I'll be honest. Now, Malathat last year, every single time she raced against Clarier, she beat her. Uh, even in the Breeders' Cup distaff, she finished a length ahead of her. Um, I think Malathat's better than Clarier. I like Clarier a lot. I think Malathat is the horse. I, I think that's the most likely winner in the race. And I'm interested to see what happens with the odds. You know, we might get a better price on Malathat than we think. Um, I really don't like the two or the five. But uh, I think it's the one, three, or four. Um, you like the five a little bit, but yeah, I thought the last race uh, was one of those that I'm, maybe I'm overvaluing Chad a little bit, <laughs> admittedly. But uh, it, it, I kind of went through this with Dunbar Road last year, and it it just feels like last race really put her in a spot here. Definitely agree. I'm Bonnie South. I mean, I hate to be dismissive of what will be one of the longer prices among the five horse fields all day, but she, I just can't imagine her beating all four of these. She doesn't win. She's a nice. Right. Fit. Okay. But she doesn't win. Cash is checks for sure. Yeah. Cash a lot of check. This is a tough spot. I mean, I think she's in over her head. Um, and, you know, I think she'll finish out of the try for probably the first time in forever. But, um, you know, I look a little closer at search results. I mean, that last race was impressive. Muddy track. Quick time, though. Um, race before, that was awful. Um, they raced, her and Mouth that race only once against each other. That was in the Oaks. Search results ran huge that day. Big time. Uh, you know, kind of home track, too, for search results. You know, you do get that. Um, yeah, you're making me think a little bit more about search results. But I think Malathat's the most likely winner, and and maybe search results could run second. Um, Clary Air is a really good horse, but never can run by Malathat. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, no, it's, a, it's an interesting race. I mean, the common refrain, small but mighty, field size-wise, and, and this one I would say is maybe even the deepest of, of all the five-horse fields deepest. with uh, only Bonnie South, the, the throwout. The deepest field is the Jiper, 
13 yeah. horses uh, before scratches, but uh, certainly I, I would think a spot uh, that horse players may be hoping that this is where the long shot comes in despite of uh, in those circumstances, knowing that people are going to be narrow in other races and maybe overspreading in the Jiper. This is where if you have a strong opinion, in, in my mind, even three or four deep, um, most people I think are going to go six, seven, eight, all button certainly in play for some. Uh, I'm looking to the far outside with number 13, who I think from that post uh, can maybe just get the right trip. It's always uh, a tough ask looking to outbreak or outmaneuver Wesley Ward in these turf sprints. Uh, but his stable star is going to ask it. So this is definitely not his best turf sprinter in here. And uh, take a shot on the far outside. Which one's the Wesley Ward horse? Oh, rest me uh, right. Uh, yes, uh, that's the five. Yeah. Yeah. Rest me right, yeah. And in the last race, Rusty Red got the 10 hole and uh, won. That's a tough, tough thing to do. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, Gregorian Chant got the rail, but fell way back and tried to close and closed pretty admirably. Uh, I So I really like both the 12 and 13. You could talk me into both those horses. They both lost to Rusty Red last time, but I think they're very competitive horses. I just did not like the draw for either of them. I yeah. think it's really tough out there on the outside in these turf sprints. Um, I'll mention two other horses. Um, Casa Creed, I mean, ran really respectively in the Middle East. Um, second by a neck and fifth by two and three quarters. Those fields were huge. Uh, and is getting back to Belmont. A horse likes Belmont. Now, um, I don't know what the odds will be. 9-2 to two is pretty good, and maybe they'll drift up a little bit, but uh, I'm looking hard at that horse. And then my long shot I like is True Valor. Um, coming off a win for Grand Motion, raced in Dubai, ran respectively in Dubai. Um, that was a year ago. So horse took a whole year off and comes back, ran in, in a little list of stakes, ran really well. Now it's making a second start off the layoff. Um, Grand Motion. I like that. I like this horse a lot at 12 to 1. Uh, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm 13. And then after that, 12, Gear Jock, you mentioned. Uh, and then the three may be a little better drawn than those, and you get a better price. So uh, I agree. And uh, Grace Creek at 30 to 1 on the morning line. Uh, and admittedly, part of the reason I really want to dig in on this horse and learn more is Jonathan Kinchin said on his ticket, he's using all but Grace Creek. And uh, I have a lot of respect for his opinion in general, but when any anytime I hear that this might be the one horse he's leaving off, and I certainly know that other horse players listen to what he has to say, and that might turn them off him, but Tyler Gaffleone and Paula Lobo is the longest price. He's one that, I mean, if, Jack Christopher wins and then Malathot and you can get Grace Creek home. Then you're cooking a little bit. So he's, he's one I wouldn't want to let beat me on, on a ticket. I go a little deeper than three twelve thirteen. but uh, I'm with you on the three as a price. And I'd love to see Gregorian chant uh, get a better trip. And I think from the 13, they're going to want to be more forwardly placed than, than what we saw last time. So uh, I'm hopeful at eight to one. Yeah. That great. I mean, first of all, all except one, I highly recommend against that strategy. Uh, okay. He made, it, he made it sound like that's his thing, which uh, I certainly am prone to shtick as well, as we all know from my social media. But uh, <laughs> if I'm going all but one, it's the favorite that I'm not going to use, not the long there shot. Go. There you go. You know, uh, back to Casa Creed real quick. Casa Creed is the defending champion. Um, ran this race last year and, and, and looked really good. Like I said, getting back to his preferred Belmont uh, Belmont track. But um, I would probably go three, four. Um, I like three, four. That's probably what right. I would use for sure. I'll look a little harder at 12 and 13 as well uh, off, you know, they, they rank behind my chart. I just didn't like the draw, but it depends on how deep I want to go. 
I could go three, four, twelve, thirteen. I think you got to try to beat um, this uh, f- this favorite, who's certainly very beatable. Yeah, no, and and he's Wesley, so you know it's just people are going to use him no matter what, and he's the right. favorite anyway. So uh, one favorite I am not going to try to beat, as mentioned several times already, the Met Mile featuring Flightline versus Speaker's Corner and three others, two of which really are no slouches, including the Breeders' Cup Sprint winner, Aloha West. Uh, I, I'm just trusting my eyes. Uh, I'm, I'm not a huge body language replay watcher type, uh, but I do think you've watched as many races as anyone who's been doing this as long as I have. have. Um, you know the extremes, and to me, Flightline – runs on that extreme where it's, I mean, it's Wise Dan, Ghost Zapper, Rachel Zenyatta. He's that type of talent in my mind. Um, Frankel, who I never saw live, but maybe put him in in his category as well. I don't think we'll get three to five. I think it'll be two to five. So similar to Jack Christopher, for me, it's just a single and move on. But I can't make a case for anyone else. I just think he's better than the rest and maybe the best in the world. Yeah. I mean, I, I totally agree with you. And, you know, this horse lays over the field from speed figure standpoint. Um, you know, it's hard to take a three to five shot off a five month layoff. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand uh, the training strategy. Sadler is not the greatest trainer um, shipping. Uh, if I remember correctly, shippers, yeah, he's 19%. He's not that bad. Um, well, how, I wonder how many of that stats, are, if they consider Santa Anita to Del Mar or ship. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Who knows? They probably do. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I thought I remember some stats where he wasn't great shipping cross country. No, it's he doesn't have a ton of grade one wins, especially. Yeah. I mean, obviously the horse makes sense. And, you you, you know, if you're going to throw him off your ticket, you're basically throwing your ticket away. Um, (laughs) You know, so I'm going to I'm going to use him for sure. I think I I could probably single him. If I did throw another horse in, I'm going to go a little wild card. I'm not going to go with Speaker's Corner, whose only hope is really to go with uh, uh, to go with Flightline. Uh, If Speaker's Corner lays back off Flightline, it's over. But if he goes right. with fly line, maybe it sets up for somebody. And the horse that I'm probably going to go with would be Happy Saber. Um, and either way, I probably would play a straight exact of flight line over Happy Saber. Um, so Happy Saber is kind of my wild card in here. I think he's got a decent shot. Definitely run second. And uh, try to get one of those two big chocks out of the exacta. Um, so I'm not going to touch sense. Yeah, I'm not going to touch the sprinter stretching out to a mile, Aloha West. Um, I like horses cutting back better. And uh, so I'm going to, you know, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm looking hard at Happy Saver. I probably play a straight exacta. I probably single flight line in any serials. And then maybe, depending on the odds, I could play a small saver win bet on Happy Saver. Sure. You know, because he's going to be, you know, he might be 10 to 1. So, um, so that's how no, I'm I mean, it. if we're talking. If we're talking two to five and speaker's corner, let's say two to one. Um, I mean, that right there is uh, what, 94% of the pool. So, uh, you know, these other horses have to be a big price for sure. Yeah. Uh, back back to the turf for the final time. Um, well, final Wait, time in the. One, real six. quick though. Oh, sure. Uh, I love the, the morning light guy. I got to give this morning light guy a lot of credit. Uh, good in three, putting three to five in for flight line and then putting 50 to one in for informative. You know, this is a, this is a proper line. I mean, the guy, right. uh, you know, give the guy some credit, you know, some of these line makers are, are really bad. No, David uh, does a fantastic, uh, earnest job. Um, never mails it in regardless of day. And, uh, it, it's comforting because like, I mean, I do the same thing you do. I basically have my idea of sort of ranking the horses and I love matching it up to the morning line and at half the tracks I play, I mean, you just can't even trust it. Oh like yeah. In New York, you can't. Oh yeah. I mean, these are good morning lines. Saratoga guy, whoever does those, not same. as good. No, oh. it's, well, maybe a little tougher, I guess, for him at Saratoga. Maybe, uh, same guy. All right. Well, anyway, he did a great job today. So. 
No. Uh, yeah, he, uh, which makes sense. I mean, uh, and Travis Stone, I know, has done Saratoga and said it's just, I mean, with the, the way the fields come in from all over, it's just a, a totally different animal. But um, yeah, yeah Bel- at Belmont, he's certainly at home. Uh, the Manhattan, mile and a quarter on a turf, grade one. And uh, again, maybe the Chad Brown show. And I think I have, I have three A's in here, and I think two of them are Chad. Uh, but I am very interested at 10 to 1 in Rock Emperor. And at that price, I'm basically saying he needs to run back to some of the races we saw last year. But, I mean, gosh, Ortiz Brown at 10 to 1 in a grade 1. Uh, I certainly like him more than Trivian, uh, his stable mate just to the outside, um, who's 8 to 1 on the morning line. And, uh, no, that's actually the only Chad I have in the A-Column. I don't like Adamo that much either at 4 to 1, who is very disappointing on Derby Day in the Old Forester. Uh, but Rock Emperor, for me, he has he has two races he ran back to that I have no doubt in my mind win this race. And at 10 to 1, I'm a believer. That's a good pick. I really liked this horse last year. And everyone's going to throw it throw him out off that really bad effort in May, which was his comeback race. It was on a yielding turf and they obviously just, just pulled, just pulled him back up. So you're going to get a big overlay because of that one bad race. Now he's racing the second time of the year. You're going to get right. uh, bikes. So um, it makes a lot of sense. This is a hard race. I really struggled with this race. Uh, I think there's quite a bit of speed. Uh, Channel maker, Tribuvon, Highland chief, um, a lot of a lot of speed. So I like horses coming from out of it. I thought Gufo ran really bit well in his last race. I think Gufo you got to use. Gufo is uh, one of those uh, nemesis for me. Uh, really? When I like him, he's awful, and when I think I'm being cagey against him, uh, you know he looks like bricks and mortar or whatever. So <laughs> at, at three to one, I decided to be against today, but he always scares me, no doubt. I think he is a must use. I'm kind of liking your, uh, your rock emperor quite a bit. Um, the other horse I think is very playable is Santine. Um, uh, yes. So Santine is very playable. I'm going to toss all the speed horses and I'm going to play this thing, uh, for horses coming from high, which your rock emperor certainly fits, uh, fits the bill. Um, the other horse that's, you know, showing up a little bit of my chart is in love. I don't Me like to. Yeah. His PPs are I'm a little, five, six, nine. Yeah. I think this horse is uh, another closer. And um, so I'm going to be looking for closers only. And maybe I'm on um, two, five, six, nine. Yeah. Yeah. No, I thought uh, in love and he's, he's similar actually to rock emperor um, in that maybe the most recent form, you can understand why they're not going to take a ton of money in here. Uh, but these mile and a quarter turf races, I mean, you need to be conditioned. You need to be on the right path to it. And they have races to run back to that are, are good enough to win at double digit odds. So, uh, you know, especially in a, in a spot where I'm singling flight line, Jack Christopher, I mean, in love could, could be the one to, you know, make this worthwhile. Yeah, more of a miler. I guess that's the one big knock on him. But Rock Emperor definitely can run the mile a quarter. And, um, you know, like you said, you get Chad Brown and Irad. You might get, he might be the ignored Chad Brown. Um, so anyway, I think we've got some, this is the race definitely to go for some value. Yeah. Um, but, although Gufo, I just, I, I really like Gufo. It's a good horse. He uh, is. Yeah, no, he's, it's one of those, I'm going to hold my nose and, and, and hope to get the price home, but, uh, and channel maker is somewhat similar too. uh, who'll be a longer price than Gufo, but I mean, they, they just run their races and sometimes it's good enough. Yeah, absolutely. Channel maker is three for 10 at Belmont's nice, nice horse. I don't think yeah. this race sets up very well for him and, uh, gonna, gonna look elsewhere. And I think rock emperor and Gufo, both make a ton of by the way rock emperor won the turf classic last october right here and beat gufo and beat channel maker so mm-hmm. I, I'm rock emperor yeah all right well that brings us to the big one the test of the champion the belmont stakes kentucky derby winner rich strike returns 
Mm-hmm. We the people, I mentioned those two first because I think they're what make this race playable in my mind. I see them both as underlays. Yes. I like the Todd squad, and I'm not going to let Skippy beat me at 20 to 1 morning line. Uh, but for me, with this eight horse field and knowing that there's speed with We the People, I'm not sold on him being completely alone by the time they get down the back stretch. I just think Mo Donegal gets a much better trip. And he's my pick on top to win, uh, but Nest and Skippy both uh, in the mix for me as well. Yeah. So, which is the champion we're testing today? Uh, well, I guess, I, guess Rich- I would say Rich Strike facing the stiffest test with the most approved. But yeah, because um, this uh, I don't see a lot I'm of sure champions. a moniker that stems more from crowning a, a triple crown champion right. than this year's type of field. But no, this is a bad field. Um, I am definitely against Rich Strike, who I think will bounce off that Derby victory. Although I do think they did the right thing, given the horse some, uh, some rest. Uh, and I can't play We the People. I think, although I think he drifts up to about five to two, I still can't touch. Him. Yeah, I agree. Um, and Mo Donegal might end up favored. And I just, you know, I'm not. I think he's a very likely winner. I just don't know if I like him as the favorite in this field. Um, so I'm tossing all three short prices just because I think I got to look for value. All right. My top pick is Nest, who I think, you know, it's basically Rapoli and Pletcher, just like Mo Donegal. And this horse is going to be sitting probably second place early, right behind We the People. And if he can beat, if she can beat We the People, then they're going to have to run her down. Um, so I like Nest a lot. I think Barbara Road, uh, I know you don't like Barbara Road, but. Barbara Road ran exactly the same race as Mo Donegal in the Derby. It was identical. Uh, the difference is was, he was one length wider and he lost by one length to Mo Donegal. They're ba- in my opinion, they're basically the same horse. However, one's going to be 10 to 1. Uh, I'm going to use Barbara Road and Nest and uh, definitely use Barbara Road in the exotics, uh, the horizontal. I'm sorry, the, the vertical exotics. I think Barbara Road's a really good pick. Uh, and then the wild card, I don't know what to do with this horse. It's creative minister. I really like this horse on the Preakness Day, and I and I got this horse, you know, in third. But um, and that horse, you know, lost early voting at the center by only a couple of lengths. But you know, three races in five weeks, pretty tough. The horse never raced it two. It's asking a lot. Um, but so I'm 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 going to go eight three five. But uh, I like. I'm sorry, three eight five is what I'm going. Three eight five. I'm going to be playing Nest uh, Nest to win. All right. Yeah. My um, with Creative Minister and Barbara Road, uh, I I would say I like Creative Minister a little better. Sure. I just think both are going to be over bet for my line. I mean, Barbara Road might be eight to one based on some of the effusive praise I've seen. I was pretty surprised to see Nest. Um, I think the line is eight, but she's as high as 10 in the Vegas books. Uh, I think that's tremendous value. Um, and I, I hope we get it on Saturday. I'm a little nervous, you know, with the Philly angle and people know Todd, but, you know, they, they can't bet every angle. Um, although I think they tried in the Preakness. <laughs> Fenwick and Happy Jack were both less than 15 to one, unbelievably. But uh, I mean, Rich Strike's going to take money uh, as the Derby winner. Mo Donegal, I agree with you. I think I thought it'd be Rich Strike a week ago would be the favorite, but at this point, I, I do think it's Mo Donegal. And then we, the people's right there as well. So, yeah, eight to one on Nest would be a okay with me. Uh, I think she's more likely than Creative Minister and going to be a longer price. Nest is the play. Barbara Road. I saw Barbara Road on an offline sports book at twelve to one. Okay. Uh, I don't know what he's is in Vegas, but I assume those lines are going to be re- remarkably similar. Uh, I mean, Barbara Road is sixth choice in here. I, I I can't imagine him being lower odds than Nest or Creative Minister. So Barbara Road, I think you're going to get. Yeah, that's the, true. You know, so. Um, well, and, that, got- and that's a good point about sixth choice because you know maybe when all is said and done in the wind pool, you don't love ten to one. But as the sixth choice, that definitely gives you some looks if you're closing the multi-race bets. Um, sixth choice is worth a little more 
at 10 to one than a third choice at 10 to one. I've always thought so, um, you know, to, to close here with him, I, I think you'd be looking at maybe some juicier payoffs than the win odds would indicate. Also this race, you know, people think it's a mile and a half. This race is traditionally won by horses on or near the lead. Um, and we, the people in nest both figured to be there. Right. If, my early speed figure on We the People was very slow coming out of that Peter Pan. I think he was, you know, it was a sealed track and he just was completely left alone. Um, and so he was able to really slow it down. Uh, we'll see if he can go a mile and a half. Right. And, we, and he washed out before the Arkansas Derby and threw an absolute stinker. <laughs> so, um, you know, he could do the same thing here. I think Nest is, you know, going to be laying second. I mean, no, no one else is going to be up there. Going to be laying second, I you know, it gets to just get a perfect stocking trip. Yep. So I'm, I hope no one else plays it. Cause that's, <laughs> that's what I'm doing it. I like it. I'm, I'm there with you. I mean, I do like Mo Donald go more than you do, but uh, yeah. I, I mean, Ness for me, just based on how, how the odds are looking to shape up would, would probably be my best case scenario other than getting live to, to Skippy with something. I suppose uh, so I was I was surprised to see him at twenty to one with with Golden Glider. Um, I think Skippy's much closer to Barber Road in likelihood of winning than he is Golden Glider. So uh, one of those I don't necessarily love him. Uh, I've got burned in the Preakness a little bit backing him at a price, but um, at the same time I, I do think he is uh, overlay uh, at twenty to one. So I need to wager accordingly. Okay. Good luck with Skippy. I, I uh, looked hard at Skippy in the Preakness, and I ended up discounting the Wood Memorial completely, uh, which was a mistake. Um, although I did hit a saver exact or early voting over Epicenter, which was pretty sweet, uh, that, that exacta. But because um, I thought, you know, anyway, I don't want to get on a side tangent, but I, I think Skippy's on stacking was a little disappointing in that Preakness. Yeah, no, he, he was disappointing. He had, he had a clear run and didn't make it. But Yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, it's going to be an interesting race, and let's hope we get a price. All right, let's, uh, let's hope indeed. So, uh, well, appreciate uh, going through, what is that, eight stakes, nine? Nine stakes? Six, six of them, grade ones, part of the pick six. Uh, we'll put tons of links in the comments uh, so you can get not only uh, – charting horse value for the Belmont stakes, but each day includes all the tracks running. So plenty of action, of course, on Belmont stakes day and every day, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, happy days. Uh, any, uh, closing thoughts, Jeff? No, uh, no closing thoughts. Thank you so all much. Right. Enjoyed it. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. It, uh, I like that we have, some agreement that we can both get excited about, but divergent enough too that tells me, you know, if I'm right, maybe an opportunity. Obviously, if, if you're right, the same goes. And uh, if I don't win, hopefully it'll be you. But uh, certainly if Nest wins, we can both enjoy together. Sounds good. Take care. All right. That's Jeff. I'm Ed. This is Horse Racing Nation. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you like subscribe plenty of other great content on the channel this week sarah albad we spoke with david aragona uh, we have the hardcore podcast as well plenty of links in the comments good luck this week